Hello everybody and welcome to another episode of Draw with Rob. With me, Rob Bidolf. I'm a children's author and illustrator. I make mainly picture books. You might have seen some of them. This one is called Kevin. It's all about Sid here, who has an imaginary friend called Kevin. Who he blame whenever he's in trouble he blames it on Kevin you see so one day his room is all untidy he gets sent to his room and look the hatch in the top of his bedroom a light comes through it and he climbs up <gasps> look at that he ends up in the imaginary world and he finds out that this character that he's made up called Kevin is actually real so that's a nice adventure maybe you've seen my dinosaur Junior's books. This one is called Give Peas a Chance. It's all about Nancy here who doesn't like eating her vegetables. There's a few other books in that series, so you might have seen those, but you're probably here because of Draw with Rob. Of course you are. Did you know there is a brand new Draw with Rob activity book out now? It's just come out. <gasps> da, da, da. There it is. It's called Draw with Rob. Build a story. And it's a really cool one. There's going to be a little preview at the end of this video. If you want to fast forward to the end of the video, you'll see me showing you lots of the pages inside this book. Um, there's loads and loads of things to do, lots of draw alongs, lots of puzzles, but it's all themed around building a story. So I'm going to show you how to, you know, choose your characters and decide where you want to set your story. And there's even some pages at the end that you can write and draw your own book on and fold over and make into your own book. So it's a really, really fun one. I think you're going to like it. I can't wait to see what you think of it. So anyway, we are here today to do a drawing, so I thought I'd do one of the draw-alongs that's featured in the brand new Draw With Rob activity book, if that's alright with you. I thought we would draw a knight in shining armour. What do you think? So a really good character for an adventure story. I don't know whether it's a boy or a girl inside that knight, but you know what? They're going to be wearing a visor, so it could be a dinosaur inside there. I don't know. I'm just going to show you how to draw the knight in shining armour. Right, what you're going to need is a pen, a piece of paper, something to colour with a bit later on. And that's it. I reckon this will take about half an hour or so. In case you haven't seen one of these videos before, I'm going to tell you how it works. I break the drawings down into little tiny bite-sized pieces so that it's much kind of easier for you to draw. Um, Lots of people tell me they can't draw, you see, and I say, well, everyone can draw. You just need to know the order to do the drawing in. So that's where I come in to help you out. So I'm going to draw a little bit on my piece of paper, pause this video, copy what I do, start me up again. I'll draw some more, then you draw, then I draw, you draw, I draw, you draw, and we'll end up with a lovely night at the end of it. Right, let's start, shall we? Okay, so I'm going to say about mm, slightly down and to the left from the centre of your piece of paper. I want you to draw a straight line, but not horizontally. I want you to draw it at a slight angle. So let's say about this sort of angle, like that. And maybe about four centimeters long. Something like that, okay? Then from the right hand side of that line, I want you to come down at right angles. Then I want you to start curving around. And we're gonna finish up so you're sort of roughly in the middle of that first line that we did, like that. And then we're gonna do the same shape, but a mirror image. So we're gonna come up, go around, and we're gonna join back up with this side, right here, like that. So we're making a sort of shield shape, which is handy because we're drawing a shield <laughs> for our knight in shining armor to carry. Now, I want you to do exactly the same shape, but just slightly bigger and outside it. Okay, so we're gonna follow it around like that, about half a centimeter outside. And then we're gonna go along the top like that. So following it all the way around like so. There we go. The thing about shields and knights' shields, they always had these really cool designs on them that would show maybe what house they belonged to, what their family was, or their family coat of arms, or maybe which army they were fighting for. So we're gonna have fun deciding what our design is gonna be a little bit later on. I'm not gonna do it yet though, because I'm gonna get on with drawing the rest of our knight in shining armor. Right then, the next thing to do is, just above this left-hand corner here, I want you to draw a sort of egg shape, like that, or a sort of like oval, I guess. 
not not really egg shaped is it because it's not pointy at one end it's just like a kind of oval shape okay then what I want you to do is a straight line from roughly the middle of that oval shape it's going to come down sort of diagonally and just disappear into the top of our shield like that then I want you to imagine that it goes straight through the shield comes out the other side like that and then we're going to change direction and we're going to go up in a diagonal line this way quite a long way across our page like that and we sort of end up roughly level with where we started with that line there then I want you to go up in a straight line for a centimeter or two like that and then we're going to do a basically a mirror image of this sort of V shape so we're going to go back across the top like that so we get level with there. Then we're going to sort of curve around, not too sharp a point, and we're going to go back down and join up with that oval like that. So we've done a sort of funny diamond shape, basically. Then I want you just to add a couple of straight lines that sort of disappear in from the top of the oval behind the diamond, like that. So it's a slightly fiddly one, this one. It is slightly fiddly. The next thing to do is we are going to add lots of sort of rectangles that get bigger and bigger and sort of fill up our diamond shape and then they get smaller and smaller as we get towards that end okay so i'll show you the first one so it's like a sort of rectangle shape thin rectangle shape like that and then the next one can you see it just sort of gets slightly bigger and it follows the shape of our big diamond but they stay roughly the same width you see what i mean I'm going to go into super speed mode to finish this off. Save us a bit of time. Here we go. Three, two, one, go. Here we go. So do you see what I mean? It's sort of filled up that shape with these sort of oblongs. And this is going to be the first part of our knight in shining armor's helmet. So this is, this is the sort of the grill that covers his or her face. Okay, now we need to do the top of the helmet. So what we're going to do, we're going to start from here, this point right here, and we're going to come up and over all the way over we're going to do a nice sort of curve and then we're just going to disappear down just behind that area there okay and that's going to be the very top of our helmet and because it's armor we're going to add a bit of detail here we're going to do another line that follows the curve around and disappears into the top of the helmet like that and we're going to do lots of little sort of tiny circles that just follow that line up and they just sort of look like little rivets that are joining two pieces of the metal together and it just gives us the illusion that this is made of metal in fact why don't we add some around here as well again just to add to this illusion that this particular suit that he's wearing is made of metal to protect him from the bows and arrows of outrageous fortune <laughs> Sorry, it's a little quote <laughs> from Shakespeare. Right, I think it's Shakespeare. Oh no, I'm gonna look really stupid if it's not Shakespeare. I'm pretty sure it is. Right, um, the next thing, we're gonna add a bit more detail to our helmet now. Right at the top here, slightly left of centre, because our knight is gonna be looking slightly this way. So slightly to the left of centre, I want you to draw a very simple little semicircle like that. And then coming out of that semicircle, we're gonna draw a great big feather because they used to have these feathers in the tops of their helmets. I think that was to show which side they're on, maybe. I don't really know, but you know, we'll say it's to show, the which, <laughs> show which side that this knight was on. We're gonna draw the feather like this. So what it is, it's sort of like a big, bouncy sort of a shape. So lots of kind of curves that kind of come out like that. And they themselves go around in a great big curve. You can do this as big or as small as you like. There's no rules, but we're gonna come all the way around so we get to the tip, let's say the tip's about there, and then we're just going to start heading back like this again, slightly curving. I mean, this is quite tricky, this one, but I think you guys are equal to the task. Do you see what I mean? So it's a nice big bouncy sort of feather shape. I don't know what that noise was, but it seemed appropriate for the feather. <laughs> right. Let's draw the bottom of our helmet now. So if you imagine that goes straight through the visor area, comes down the other side, and we're gonna keep quite tight to the bottom of the visor, and we're just gonna disappear back there behind our little shield, like that. 
position. I want that to be a bit straighter. So yeah, let's set it back like that. And then we're gonna add a bit more detail. Um, we're gonna add the sort of like two side panels here. So we're gonna have one that comes down sort of in a straight line like that. Curves at the bottom. Another line joins the end of that curve. And then that carries on underneath there. I think you might have to do quite a bit of pausing in the video today just to follow exactly what I do because it's quite fiddly. Then over here we need to do the equivalent but it's at a slightly different angle so we're just going to draw a straight line down that curves at the bottom and disappears behind our shield and then a couple of other straight lines and I think that will do the trick. That shows what we want to show. Let's add a few more of those little circles shall we to add a bit of sort of armour texture. Let's see, we could even add some down here as well, why not? The more little circles, the merrier. Okay, time for our knight's body now. Again, a little bit fiddly, but you can do this, you can do this. We'll start by drawing a little curve that comes from the bottom of the helmet, about that sort of length, okay? Then we're gonna turn at a sharp angle, but again, in a little curve, and we're gonna go down to a little point about there. Then we're gonna bounce up again, and disappear behind the shield, like that. And that is going to be the first part of our knight's chest plate of his armour. Okay, let's just add a little bit at the bottom here. We're going to add a line that almost goes straight across and out, and then joins back up with that area there. Same on this side. Comes out, disappears behind the shield, like that. Guess what we're going to do? That's right, we're going to add a lot of our little circles along here at the bottom of the suit of armour. So do you see what I mean? Adding these little circles really helps to create the illusion that the suit is made of metal. You can even add a few little dots. I'm going to add some tiny dots just along that bottom edge there. I've got room to do little circles in this and that bit so I'm just going to add dots. There we go. Okay. Now one arm, he's holding a shield, that's why we did the shield first, because it's right at the front of our drawing. So one arm, handily for us, is hidden behind that shield so we don't have to draw it. You know, I've told you before, haven't I, how lazy I am as an illustrator. <laughs> so any excuse not to draw something, if I don't have to, I will take that chance. But we are going to draw the left arm, so what we need to do first is a little straight line there and a curve. That's going to be the top part of our suit of armour. Arm the arm of the armour, if you see what I mean. Then let's draw two straight lines coming out of there, be the top part of our arm. Now, armour was all sort of in little bits and pieces. You had one piece for the top part of the arm, one piece for the shoulder, one piece for the elbow. So we have to draw a little elbow section here. We're just gonna draw straight line, straight line, straight line, slightly curved line. And that's gonna be like, the elbow section. Coming down from that, two more straight lines for the forearm section of the armour. And now we've got to add an armoured glove. So what we're going to do, we're going to do sort of like an upside down V shape at the end and then we're just going to draw a curve. And that's going to be the main part of our glove. And I've told you this little trick before really, when we're drawing hands, sometimes we draw a circle and the little Thing, fingers and thumbs as little semicircles. Well, it's pretty much the same with this, except this time the fingers and thumbs are going to be slightly more pointy than a semicircle. Three, four, there we go. Four fingers, one thumb. And there we go, that's our little armoured glove. And then if you just add just some little sort of stripe detail like that, maybe even some to the fingers too. Again, I think with the when you're drawing a suit of armour, it's all about the detail. Come on then, let's add some, wish we had our little dots. Let's add them in that little V shape like that. A few little dots there. How about that? Let's add some across here as well. Some across the top of the elbow piece and the bottom. And certainly some on the shoulder piece. Like that. There we go. That looks pretty armoury to me, doesn't it? What do you think? Okay, time for the legs. Right. Let's start with a straight line, coming straight down 
probably about that long. We don't want to do the legs too long. This is a cartoon night, so all of our proportions are slightly out. I've got a very big head this night. <laughs> so we come straight down to about there. Then we're going to go up at a 45 degree angle. Then we're going to start heading back up. But before we get to the top, I want to stop about halfway and just draw a little circle in the middle and then carry on. And that's going to be his little knee protector. So let's do two little lines coming out to separate the two parts of the leg armour. And then let's add some little circles at the bottom going up here. There we go. That can be one leg. We're going to do exactly the same on the other side, except obviously a mirror image. So we come down, we go up at our angle, we go up, we draw our little circle, and then we carry on up. Two lines, and then four little circles at the bottom. And there we go. There's our two legs. Feet. We're just going to come straight out from there in a sort of triangle. Join back up there. And that's going to be one of our foot plates. And we're just going to add some stripes on these. Let's stop about there. Exactly the same on the other side. A little triangle. How many did I do? I did five. One, two, three, four, five. There we go. Guess what? A few little dots just at the end like that and there we go I think we're pretty much there and knight holding a shield with his lovely feather and his great big visor I'm saying his it could be a her it could be an alien in there it could be a pussycat <laughs> it could be a lion I don't know it could be anything you like I don't know what mine is but what I do know is I'm gonna color mine in now now traditionally Suits of armour were made of metal, so they were usually sort of silvery colour, or maybe brassy sort of colour. But, you can do anything you like. You know what I like, multicoloured is really good. I'm probably going to stick to the traditional silvery colour, but you could do bright red, you could do patterns. Don't forget, you've got to add your own little design here, which sort of says which team our knight is on. So you can do anything you like. I think I'm going to keep mine quite simple, quite kind of traditional. But anything you like, you can maybe draw one of our other Draw With Rob drawings there. Maybe the Gregosaurus could go on there. That would be cool, wouldn't it? Um, so it's like a drawing within a drawing. That's fun, isn't it? So the possibilities are endless. I'm going to go into super speed mode to colour mine in now. I will see you back here in about 30 seconds. Three, two, one, go. Okay, that will do for my colouring. So there is my finished knight in shining armour. Do you know what? I'm just going to add a little bit more shadow around here. So shadow, do you remember what I say about shadow? You just add a bit of scribble around the feet or the area that's touching the ground and you make that area a little bit darker right next to the feet. And it really makes it look like they're standing on a surface. And I've added a few little tufts of grass here and there just to suggest that this particular knight is standing in a field, in a battlefield maybe, who knows. Um, so I've kept to like my nice sort of silvery um, metal armour. I've added a bright red feather there. I've decided, excuse me, I've decided that my knight is um, fighting for apples. I don't know why. Some of you might already know this, but apples are my very favourite thing to draw. They're my go-to doodle of choice. Um, so I just fancy drawing a nice bright red apple. The red matching the feather, the green matching the grass. So there we go. And um, I've just done a bit of shading here. So the areas that would be under the shadow of the chin area, for example, I've done a bit darker, certain areas darker and lighter, just to lift things forward and move things back. So a little tip for you there. Oh, I mustn't forget to sign my drawing. Where shall I sign it? I think today I'll sign it here. Here we go. Rob. There we go. Don't forget to sign your drawings. Everyone needs to know who creates these amazing works of art. So I've really enjoyed drawing this one. I hope you have too. I can't wait to see your suits of armour and the multicoloured patterns and whatever design you've chosen for your shield. It's going to be super exciting to see all that sort of stuff. So what you need to do, get your adult to take a picture 
of your drawing, post it on social media using this hashtag here, draw with Rob. That way I will get to see it. And who knows, maybe your drawing will make the grid at the end of the week. And as I said, this is a drawing. This is one of the drawings that you find in the new Draw With Rob activity book. If you hang around now for a minute or two, you will see you'll see my little face holding, <laughs> not my face holding the book up, but you see me holding the book up and you'll see my little face. And I'll be telling you all about the book and what's inside the book, a little sneak peek inside the book if you haven't ordered it yet, but it's ready and available for you to order now wherever you get your book. So I really hope you like it and you send me some of the pictures that you've drawn from the book. Maybe you'll draw the night again in the book. Um, I hope you've had fun. I certainly have. I'm going to be back again very soon for another episode of Draw With Rob. In the meantime, take care everyone. Bye-bye. Hello everyone, I'm back and I'm here to tell you about something super exciting. I know lots of you have enjoyed my Draw With Rob activity books. Well, guess what? We've got a brand new one and it's out now and it's called Draw With Rob, Build A Story. And as the title suggests, this one is all about telling you how to build your own stories, how to write them, how to illustrate them. We're gonna think about characters, how to choose your good guys and your bad guys. We're gonna think about where you set your stories, very important, when you set your story. Is it gonna be in the past, set in the past or in the future, present day? Um, we're going to talk about how to structure your story. We, we need to give it a good beginning, middle and end. What about plot twists? Do unexpected things happen in your story? It's all covered in this book here. And we've also got our regular draw-alongs. Loads of draw-alongs in this one. Lots of puzzles, lots of colouring. It's super fun. Every single page is perforated. So once you've done your little draw-along like this one of a unicorn, you draw it in the frame here and you tear that page out and you stick it up on the wall. That's super cool, isn't it? And guess what? Right at the end, we've even got lots of blank pages like that for you to write your own story and illustrate your own story. And then you can put the whole thing together. Look, you put your own story together like that and then you've made your own book. You don't need me anymore. So listen, I'm super proud of this book. I'm pretty sure you're going to really, really enjoy it. And guess what? It's out now. You can get it from wherever you buy your books. Okay, so listen, I hope you enjoy it. And I'm going to see you really soon for another episode of Draw With Rob. Bye, everyone.